Um, what I personally like to do when I animate is put the stuff in symbols. And before I do that, I put each individual sprites in groups. Why? Because um, if you're doing this, you have less of a chance to mess up your sprites while you're lining them all up in the symbol if you do what I do and you don't really have to like select everything like this you can like select the tops of them all hit control A and then hit shift on him it's it's just like a shortcut for a lot of ways in my opinion I'm gonna hit control X and delete those go to him right click hit convert to symbol or you can just press F8 there are three types of symbols movie clip button graphics we don't need to get the buttons just yet but movie we're gonna go talk about movie clips and graphics in just a little bit so set I have this set to the middle usually I don't mess with any of this crap and we're going and I usually name the stuff by the name of the character and what they're doing so Sonic Idol movie clip go inside and there we have a new timeline you see this says scene one now it's in Sonic Idol and it's a timeline just for this one idol so let's press F7 which is Cree or you can right click hit insert blank keyframe or you can like I said press F7 and you can do the onion skin tool or you can do the edit multiple frames tool I tend to do this because I can get like and oh yeah and paste these back here and they're on a different frame I usually go I used to do it with onion skin but then I realized edit multiple frames gives me a more clear alignment so I go with this I don't recommend doing this if you're not acquainted to flash but oh well yeah so now we're going to align up the poses how do we do that you ask well I'm glad you all asked personally first up I notice I find a center point where they all stay stationary. So like Sonic's shoe. Like I noticed in and and this is where you watch the games or if you yeah and play the games for reference. Like it's I have a strong opinion about if you're going to like animate sprites and you're going to and you're gonna like animate the sprites and stuff like from Sonic look at the Sonic Advance games to like see how they're animated and what they're aligned by you know it's just good and so by this pose I know because I've used it a bunch it's aligned by this shoe here for the most part so I'm just gonna keep doing this and aligning it up by this shoe and what I'm doing here after I align it, I hit shift and unselect the sprite I just did. Control X, make a new keyframe, and paste in place, and there they go. And I just click and drag. And then I hit, and then you, know, you guys get the picture. And there we go, that's how I animate these sprites. And let's play it. Looks pretty good. Now, what I like to do is go to back to the edit multiple frames go to the second pose zoom in on my center point that I used and now I will use the comma and period key to browse through the poses to make sure they're all lined up make sure nothing's out of place there we go and now play this there we go now the FPS is also important 12 Unless you're the guy who animated Sonic Reversal episode one, don't don't do 12 FPS. Don't do 12 FPS. It's it's a, it's a slow frame per second. Um, the um I'm into filmmaking. A standard for film is I believe 24 frames a second. And if we play this, see it goes pretty fast. Um, other animators use 26. Uh, other animators use 28. Um, some animators use 30. Um, 38. I've seen animators work at 36 before. 
or if you're destruction series, you work at 40. Or if you're destruction series, you work at 40. That's just what DS does. And Vic currently works at 32 FPS. Which I, I actually had to um, work at 32 FPS for something for Vic, but that's you'll you'll see that when the ad episode comes out. Personally, I we, I work at 28. And when I play this over here, that goes a bit fast. So let's increase the frames a bit by pressing right clicking a frame, insert frame, or we can have the timeline over the frame and just press F5 and go through and do that. And there we go. We get a pretty smooth animation. And now place it here. Control enter to test your movie. And there we go. We get an idle of Sonic. It looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to now sometimes I now in my opinion, sometimes it looks a little fast. Personally, depending on who you are, it may look better for different people. So, I'll usually test out between um, 3 frames or 2 frames. Currently 3 frames is looking good to me. Let's extend this out. As you can see as it extends out, we get just this one stationary frame we see on the timeline but and this is where movie clip and graphics come in because that's it's a movie clip now let's go to the graphic and while on the timeline we see the idol and stuff and it's basically on your personal preference on what you make movie clips what you make um graphics personally for me if it's stuff that's going to loop like an idol I don't bother like idols or walks I leave them as movie clips why because I know what they're going to be doing I don't need to see it and especially if you do spacebar text boxes like me double s Alvin Earthworm did um Shea Falcon and Dawning of Darkness we all have spacebar for our text boxes I also believe Sonic Reversal had them. You can't use graphics for those because since the graphic is playing on the timeline and it only goes as the timeline goes, say, here's a little hinting at action script for you. Say you put the... All right, everyone, sorry about that. There was a, a slight family interruption and um, recording stopped oddly enough for another strange reason so let's get back to it shall we um we've got an, this layer here with the um with our graphic of sonic's idol <laughs> as you can see it plays through when we play it <laughs> and then um right here we've got the action script of stop so press control enter see what happens and you can see it stops where the action script stop is and it's no longer playing until I right click and hit play why because it's a graphic graphics play depending on the length of the timeline so say I got to the end it probably jumped to this and you probably couldn't tell because I put just the right amount of frames but it jump and then it started back from the beginning but since this action script's here, it stops it, and it stops right there. It doesn't proceed to the rest of the keyframes, and that's why this doesn't work. But then if you get the movie clip, play, play, playing, playing, oh, it's still playing, why? Right click, oh, it stopped, play. See? And movie clips, since they play in their own timeline, they, uh... It, they don't depend on any of this just where you place them and where you tween them and stuff they're they're their own thing man they you can't control them but yeah that you can't use movie clips for the, you can't use graphics for that but um because they'll stop and, and movie clips won't so they're good and again um depending on what you want to do Stuff for me, personally, stuff that loops continuously like this, I'll put in a movie clip. Stuff like a punch or a kick that doesn't loop, I won't put in a into a movie clip. I'll put that in a graphic. 
and also put single poses into movie clips is just how I am. Now let's get on to tweening, shall we? Um, let's use a run. Let's go with this run here. Mm -hmm. And you can also like do this cool stuff to minimize down what it highlights. It's a neat, cool little tool. I like it. It's a nice feature. Um, back to this paste. We had 300 as our size. Control B. And I'm probably just gonna um. Ooh. I'm just gonna probably listen to some music and I'm gonna fast forward through me doing this. So I'll be right back real soon. Okay, before I say anything, um, I'm just gonna tell you about, for something else, this run here, um, how I align runs and stuff is see the head, the nose can always be a center point and I also do it by the soles of the shoes. These black parts of the shoes always stay together for me. And the nose for me is also a crucial center point for it. And that's how I do this. So we're going back into time lapse. This is the run we just did. And like I said, since it loops, we're gonna have it in a movie clip. And now when we play, there we go, we got this run. Pretty smooth, pretty nifty. Looks amazing, doesn't it? Okay, now what we're gonna do, let's go to the beginning of the timeline. Go back to here. Actually, we're gonna have him partially in. I'm gonna go to maybe about frame 20. Make a, make a keyframe. Use the, I'm using my arrow keys, by the way, to do this. I use this arrow keys by themselves to move him around slowly. And I hold shift to move him quickly. Let's have him go here. Let's go. And you see, there we go. He tweens across. So let's go. Yeah, he's just running across our screen. And now, what else we can do is put a keyframe here in the middle. And we're going to have an ease. Ease in by 100 or so. Ease out by 100. And we play here. You can see he like kind of starts off slow, picks up speed, and slows down. It's, it's a good way to like show picking up speed, slowing down, and it also works for gravity too. Now let's see it and it looks pretty good. Yeah. Alright, and that's pretty much the uh, basics of Flash. Or well, if you want me to do another session to teach, um, write down in the comments exactly what you want me to um, do in the next tutorial. Don't forget, uh, don't forget to show some love for the video, and if you know people who want to learn to become animators in Flash, and for sprite animations, then if you want, you can send them my way for some tutorials, and maybe they'll have some questions to ask me. I'm always open to help people. Have a good spring break for those who are going on it this week, as myself, and just have an all-around fantastic day.